Um, I sort of started getting into this maybe four or five years ago. Um, a friend of mine uh, was telling me how she was really into doing it and it sounded like fun. Um, sort of I started um, online and got, got hooked. Um, and it's been a fun thing to do sort of as a hobby in my spare time. I really, yeah, it's really relaxing. I would say I'm a, a hobbyist genealogist. The need to provide records to people goes to sort of the need that we all have to understand where we came from, who our ancestors were, who help us understand who we are. It's actually fulfilling a very human need, I would say, uh, to understand ourselves. Genealogists, research-oriented genealogists, they're interested in names and dates and places and facts, but uh, I think there's a vastly larger number of people who are interested in understanding the story of their ancestors. I'll just give you a little background. We think there's been about 100 billion people live on the Earth. There's about 10 billion of the 100 billion that have ever lived for which there is some documentation. Early on, at the turn of the last century, we would go in, we would find an archive, and they would have these records, and we said, listen, what we'll do is we will come in with our volunteers and cameras, we will take a picture, we will image these records you have, and in return for doing that, we'll give you a copy. So if you get a flood or a fire or something, you've got a copy, and we will keep a copy, and all we ask you is the right to share that microfilm with somebody who wants it. We have five floors, over 140,000 square feet, over 500 computers, over 750,000 books. We have approximately 2.4 million rolls of microfilm. That's about 3.3 billion individual images. Of the 3.3 billion, only about 800 million of that has been digitized. Being sponsored by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we have a, a special um, kind of affinity for family history research. We love our families. We want to be connected to them uh, through the generations. And so um, we have sort of a tradition in the church to research our ancestors. We don't have anything we sell. Everything we have is free. Um, and people ask, well, why would the church do that? We believe that families uh, not only exist in this life, but they exist in the life to come. And so if we can document our families and they can be together and we know who they are, then we believe that's an e eternal principle, not just a uh, worldly principle. And, and frankly, we are all God's children. And so uh, it, not just members of the church is this uh, useful for, but really for everyone who's a child of God, who comes to know themselves through knowing their ancestors and who can serve their ancestors through identifying them and learning about them. There are large profit players, there are large non-profit players. There's the commercial and the non-commercial side of it, and they all play together in the sandbox. Data is big business. There are a lot of data brokers out there. Ancestry.com technically could be seen as a data broker. They are in the business of acquiring data and selling it to you and me under the guise of searching for our ancestors. 20 years ago, family history was pretty much the definition of a niche. Now the family history is social. It's a lot easier than it used to be. Hundreds of millions of documents actually go through our operation to be digitized and presented to the site. We have 10 billion records actually on Ancestry.com right now. And once all of that information has been transcribed or entered into the system, then our teams here work to optimize that data so that it's searchable in the site. We make deals with repositories all over the world, archives, courthouses, libraries, to go in and digitize original family history material. We spend uh, over $20 million uh, a year acquiring content. This combination of a continual feed of new content along with our customers 
uh, using that data, adding structure to that data is very powerful. What's just so satisfying about it is sort of solving all these little mini mysteries and you feel like this sleuth and that you, you know, used your hard detective work to figure something out. There's certain points in the research that I've done where I just haven't been able to go back any further. Um, I've hit roadblocks, there's just sort of, you know, I, I'm at a dead end. Um, and hopefully the DNA test will be able to tell me further back um, and with some actual accuracy um, to correct any mistakes I may have made, which I'm sure I have made mistakes. And that is why I'm going to spit in this tube and take this test. One of the uh, issues that we have with family history is it takes a little bit of time. You have to do some research, you have to look up records, and you know, your, your younger generation doesn't necessarily have all that time. And so by taking a DNA test, it's a way to supercharge and jump right into family history. So 23andMe was founded with a mission to really change healthcare uh, by giving people access to their personal genetic information. And we had some genealogy features where people could learn a bit about their ancestry. And ever since then, we've been adding health reports and adding ancestry features that enable people to learn more about who their ancestors were. Parts of your genome might look like they come from Northern Europe, parts from Southern Europe, parts from the Near East. And then we, uh, at the end, once we've covered the whole genome, we add up the fractions of all the pieces and, and that's your, basically gives you the percent ancestry from each region. DNA is, is really exciting. It's a technology that family historians have not yet fully harnessed, I don't think. We have some great products on the market and what I can't wait to see further integration of the records companies with the DNA companies to provide a really interesting experience. I mean, you can walk through the past with your DNA and it's coming, it'll be there. I get. I mean, I guess what's sort of surprising here is that this doesn't include it doesn't include British or like Southern European, which in theory should be a significant portion of my genetic makeup. I mean, I would hate to see it at a point where it was so good that it took away the old method of research um, that you know you could just take a test and it would tell you everything. Just about two months ago, my uncle dug up in his attic this whole box of old family photos. Um, one of the pictures was um, of my great-great-great aunt and uncle as children at uh, a costume ball that they attended. Um, and they're in these, you know, sort of funny outfits and they look like kind of weird, glum Victorian children. You could sort of immediately relate to them as these kids in these stupid outfits, kind of not wanting to have their picture taken. Their parents dragged them to this children's costume ball. They're probably a little bit too old for it. The DNA information itself, the A's, T's, C's, and G's, are not very interesting to people. It's just a long string of letters. But, so it's really about the stories that you can pull out that are meaningful to people. When I share this with my niece and nephew, if I show them a chart, they run the other way. That's not interesting. But if I tell them the story about my great-grandfather, who actually died in Jacksonville, Florida, that's neat. That puts it in perspective. As a family history business, you know, we see right at the root of everything, uh, the, the, every person's story. You know, that story is what's important to us. What was life like for them? You know, what was going on at the time in the place that they lived? What did their, you know, their, their environment look like? What kind of jobs did they have? We are related, distantly related, to Abraham Lincoln, right? And so I went home that night and I told my kids, listen, he's a distant relative. And so now when they see Abraham Lincoln or they see something about him or they read a story, um, my little seven-year-old the other day, he goes, Dad, remember, he's our relative, right? And it was like, you know what? That's what it's, that's what it's about. There's an old saying that you don't know who you are until you know where, from where you've come. When you try to find out about people, if they didn't leave anything, you're frustrated. So the best thing you can start doing is preserving about yourself right now. 
if you think about it today, we're actually generating more records than we've ever generated before. And yet UNICEF uh, recently came out and said over 40% of the world's population will die with no records. At some point, we need to think about what our grandchildren are going to wish that we would have saved. Um, it's almost a fundamental human right to exist. You know, and once you're gone, if you've left no story behind, then did you exist? 